You guys heard my daughter, she's feeding me. <laughs> I thought it was part of your presentation, Diana. I'm sorry about that. Another way to learn more about people on the car, right? <laughs> exactly. We see dogs and pets and kids and all kinds of things. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, we can officially get started. I think we have a, um, a good number of people joining us. So um, today we have a few announcements, um, but I wanted to share the agenda with you guys. Um, and before I forget to introduce myself, my name is Diana Mancarres. I'm the president of the Elgin Hispanic Network. I work for the Grand Victoria Foundation. And for our um, agenda today, we'll do a welcoming. We did have the informal networking from 11.30 to 12. We will continue to be doing that each month. So hopefully you can join us. Um, and just make some more connections with people that uh, might benefit from collaborating with you. We also have some announcements from the board and then we're really excited to hear uh, from our host agency, which is Elgin Community College. So Dr. Sam will be sharing a presentation. We also have a networking activity and then we will have some time for announcements. So uh, one of my first announcements, I wanted to thank everyone for filling out our annual membership survey. We received 31 responses and I wanted to share the results of that survey with you. One second. So although 31 is not the totality of the membership, it's a big improvement from last year. So we're getting better at um, getting your feedback. Um, we do this every year, but we are obviously always open to getting some feedback from you guys about things that maybe we could be doing more of or less of. So I'll just walk through some of the, um, the questions here, as well as some of the comments that were made. And just a reminder, when I'm presenting, I can't see the chat. So if there's any questions, if um, someone from the board or um, someone else could just uh, unmute and let me know if there's questions that I need to address. So of the 31 that um, responded, 28, 96% um, of them were members. So there was a very few small amount who were not. Um, the majority of the respondents were satisfied or extremely satisfied with EHN. There were a few that were somewhat satisfied or not satisfied, which I think it's understandable because our um, meetings have changed so much since the pandemic. We've been trying to do the best we can to continue to meet and exchange um, information and good resources for our community. Um, still, the majority of people are very likely to recommend us to their friends and businesses. And we do encourage you to invite guests to our meetings. You can bring a guest once um, per meeting. And if you are joining as a guest on your own, you can join a, a meeting as a guest for free once. But if you want to join a few more times, we do ask that you either become a member or there is a $20 fee um, to join. So the majority of um, people have made a meaningful connection during our meetings. And I know that right now we're meeting virtually, so it's not so easy to walk up to people. Um, you can't walk up to people, but uh, maybe through the chat, you can reach out to different people. Uh, Paola and Rick suggested to put your organization name as part of your name on the Zoom, which can help people um, know where, you're, where you work and maybe they can reach out to you as well. So. Um, it was just a different world that we're dealing in right now, right? Very digitally uh, focused. So we're trying to do the best we can to continue to give you value um, in the meetings. So um, some of the comments that we had for the question about um, the connections that were made, we heard from different people who have secured um, volunteers or have made connections to different organizations. Um, if you guys are interested in reading all of these comments, I think that we can make them public as well, just to be transparent. We were really interested in this question about what you would like to see more or less of during our meetings. 
and we were happy to hear that the majority of you guys are happy with um, the opportunity to share announcements. And many of you were looking forward to the breakout uh, room to have some more networking time. And that, that's also one of the reasons why we are starting to do the informal networking from 11.30 to 12. And I think it went well this time. There was a good group of people who were able to share more about what they're doing. And thank you so much, Gil, for um, coming up with some questions as well to help the conversation move along. Um, so more of you, a lot of you said you wanted to continue connecting and um, networking. So that was good. Um, there was a comment about more networking and less fundraising. So that's also something that we are um, discussing internally as we are um, planning for our end of year events. Um, we will share an update with you guys once we have made some decisions about those. So the majority of people had at least attended four to six events. Um, there were very few that had not attended any of them. Um, we know that not everybody can hop on Zoom, although sometimes being able to just log into the computer and not have the commute can make it more accessible to some people. We understand that it's not everybody um, who, it's not as accessible to everyone. So we do appreciate you guys when you show up for the meetings, if you bring guests or um, share about your attendance to the meetings to help us get a little bit more awareness about the EHN meetings. We um, were surprised, well not surprised because every year is the same, that a lot of people are not familiar with our Facebook group or our, uh, Facebook page. So please look us up on Facebook, follow us on the, on the page and request to be a group of, a member of the group. We do ask that you complete the short survey that we have in the oh, private group page because we are only accepting people who are either members of EHN or who have um, like a connection to Elgin. For the Facebook group, I also wanna remind everyone that only members can post their announcements because that's one of the benefits that we are offering you as you become a member. Also, uh, many of you have not um, logged into the Wild Africa account. So that's something that we want to encourage you to do. We did a presentation in January about the benefits of logging into your account and reaching out to different people through um, Wild Africa. And we have an announcement that we will be making about a new forum that we are opening. We also got a lot of people who said they were interested in joining a committee. Some of you gave us your email address, but some of some of the people who responded didn't. So if you are interested in joining one of our committees, we have a fundraising committee, finance, membership, um, a social cultural committee, marketing and scholarship um, and awards committee. So those are all different opportunities for you to be more engaged with EHN. Yeah, I know what my steps are because... Um, I think those are all the yeah. questions. Does anybody have any questions about the survey? Right. Um, my next announcement, I wanted to um, ask Gil if maybe we could take a couple of minutes to share about the Wild Africa Forum for announcements. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I just want to let everybody know that in the past, we've had a uh, kind of a newsletter that would go out twice, uh, I think once a month, twice twice a month, I think. Uh, and it was a newsletter that was primarily comprised of your guys' announcements. You would send us a, uh, a flyer and we would put it in this, uh, this newsletter. Uh, we have an e-list uh, of, of everyone we would be sending that out. Now we've really struggled a lot with our marketing department because uh, we just uh, haven't had anybody there to help fulfill it. And they've been the, the primary force behind putting that uh, newsletter together. So uh, in, in the interim, what we're thinking about is possibly having uh, a area on our website where uh, it would be kind of like a forum. Uh, some of you have, uh, maybe you're familiar with Quora or, or uh, you know, certain certain groups you belong to, um, uh, Reddit I think is another kind of forum kind of thing. So we would create a topic and people can, you know, add things to it. For example, we're thinking of maybe if we were to add a topic called job announcements, that that could be a place where anybody in our co in our membership that would be interested in having a job announced, go there and just 
added on there and people can talk and discuss and what have you on each one of those topics. Uh, another topic we're thinking of putting together is like volunteer opportunities. Uh, another topic could be uh, Elgin events, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so we're, we'd like to run that as an experiment uh, with you guys to see uh, how you like it, how it works out for you. Uh, of course, it would require you to, to sign into your uh, EHN uh, account uh, in order for you to, to post uh, and interact. But um, that, that's what we're thinking about. If, if anybody has kind of any initial feels about it, let us know. Uh, it's, since it's something new and something we're thinking of doing, it, we certainly would want your absolute honest uh, feedback about it. Uh, we're not married to this stuff, so we got thick skin. So feel free if, if, uh, if there are things that uh, you kind of like or don't like. The only limitations we have is that it's, it's, a, it's part of the, our uh, membership uh, software, which is called Wild Apricot. And so they have certain limitations. Uh, we can't unilaterally change too much. Uh, but uh, within their confines, there are things we can change. So uh, please let us know as we unveil that, your thoughts on that. Uh, if you have any initial thoughts on it, love to have those too. Thank you, Gil. You're welcome. Uh, Diana, do you want to share an announcement about the scholarship? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Diana ortega Ariz. I am the scholarship uh, committee chairperson on the EHN board. And we are three weeks away uh, from the application deadline for this year's round of scholarships. We award uh, up to three students who are graduating seniors going into college in the fall. And each scholarship is up to, to $1,500. So it's a significant amount. Um, and we really, really need everyone's help here in getting the word out to um, the community. The students must be Hispanic and they must be residents of Elgin. And this is one of the primary ways that the EHN lives out its mission in benefiting and giving back to the community. Um, I wanna say thank you to the scholarship committee members who um, a lot of them are new. I see Maria is on, on the call here and uh, Tina Burkholtz from the library. So um, thank you to all of the new, and Adriana, thank you uh, for serving on the committee this year. Um, if you have any questions about the scholarship, let me know. Deadline is April 7th. It's posted on the EHN Facebook. Um, and if you can download and uh, or save the image there and share it with other social media platforms, I would appreciate it. I don't happen to be on any other social media platforms other than Facebook. And I know that that is not where high school seniors are. <laughs> um, so I need everyone's help in getting the word out to uh, make sure that high school seniors don't miss out on this opportunity. April 7th is the deadline. Maria, you have one more announcement? Um, yeah, Liana, the, the poll not public so we are unable to reshare it to our social media pages so whenever you get a chance if you can oh I just saw it now it's public sorry okay <laughs> well anyway I can I can save these for some reason I'm trying to share it to my to my Facebook and it's still not allowing me um is there mm -hmm. any way you could maybe change it because I think it's because you posted it on your on your personal page and then reposted it on on EHN's fa uh, Facebook page. I'm, I'm okay. not able to share it. So just letting you know that way people okay. are able to share it. And then okay. for Instagram, um, I do have a few connections with the high school, with the local high schools. You are okay with us sending this image, right? To their Instagram. Okay, perfect. Yep. Awesome, thank you. We will be posting later today in the EHN public Facebook page. So you can help us share it. All right, everyone, thank you so much. I'm really excited to bring up to the virtual podium, Dr. Sam from ECC, um, who will give us a presentation on ECC. Thank you, David, um, Dr. Sam for being here. Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you. And uh, let me start by asking for how much time do I have? You have 15 minutes. 15 minutes. I needed to know because uh, I can talk for two hours, I can talk for 10 hours, I can talk for one minute. And so thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to talk to the uh, Elgin Hispanic Network. Uh, it's one of the things I look forward to doing every year. 
and I know that you have meetings on campus and and um, we've not been able to do that in a while, uh, but let me do this. I'm extending an invitation to you to come as soon as we open up, which is very, very soon. Uh, and it's good to see several of you uh, on the screen. Um, Elena Gadia, thank you. It's good to see you. I've not seen you in person in a long, long time. Um, thank you for all the things you did related to the uh, census. You were a point person at the college and thank you. I see uh, Jaime Garcia, please extend my regards to, accept and extend my regards to uh, Professor Emeritus Donna Garcia uh, that we miss her uh, and we hope she is doing well and several others here. As I always do, whenever I have a presentation with board members, I introduce our board members. I'd like to start with the chair of our board, uh, Dr. Donna Redman, uh, who is there. Uh, she will usually wear red, but today she's wearing green. Uh, St. Patrick's Day to all of you. It's and I'm wearing Patrick's green, <laughs> a version of green. And, um, uh, and then we also have the secretary of our board, Mr. Jeffrey Meyer. Uh, there. Uh, yes, uh, good to see both of green you. Green tie, Dr. Sam. Green tie. Yes, green tie. Green tie. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> and and um, um, I wouldn't be crossing the line by saying that they are up for re election. Um, and um, I can say this factually. I can't tell you to vote for them, but I can tell you factually that they have been very committed to the institution. They are um, the, the two critical um, critical shared values that they've been committed to equity and diversity. And um, let me say something else about uh, Dr. Redman. She brings a unique perspective. She has grandchildren and great grandchildren who are Latinx, who have been ECC students. And so we've enjoyed having them there. And that's where I want to start my comments. As you know, since 2009, we've been a Hispanic serving institution. Let me explain for those who do not know what that means. It means we have at least 20%, 25% uh, of our students being of Hispanic heritage. So it means since 2009, over 25% of our student body has been Hispanic. And that's wonderful. That, and I'll talk about something related to that in a minute. I remember when I came to the college uh, in 2007, we were around 18, 19%. I had us check the numbers because I came from a Hispanic serving institution in Houston and I knew the benefits of doing that. So we checked the numbers and by 2009, we were at the 25% mark. Pre-pandemic, we were 45% Latinx as an institution, 45%. So every fourth, fifth person that you saw at ECC was of Latinx heritage. Presently, that has dropped to 35%. And that is solely because of pandemic. Before that, it was 40% and then it went to 45% the following year. So we are down to 35. And that is consistent across the state, across the country. More Latinx students chose not to go to school this year because of the pandemic. And as you know, Latinx, and African-Americans have been disproportionately hit by the pandemic. And so they've 
chosen to do other things, but I will make you an offer uh, towards the end of my presentation. We want you back and I'll make you an offer. In the meantime, during the pandemic, the college has done many, many, many things. One of the things that I will say, uh, and it's not publicized that much, right at the time that we went into the lockdown, the college donated a lot of PPEs to the local hospitals. We have things in our labs that we were able to give to the hospitals so that they will be able to operate efficiently. We've had food uh, pickups. Over 20,000 families have picked up food from our campus. And even though we've been closed, the college has been accessible to our community. We've been a place where several people have gone for COVID testing. In fact, we are ready and willing to do it anytime, but the numbers have declined. And so it's been suspended at the moment. Also on the 25th and 26th of February, we were a site for vaccination. We had clinics. On the first day, we had 1,510 people who were vaccinated. And on the second day, we had 1,770 people who were vaccinated. We were expecting that King County Department of Health will continue. But I understand as of now, they are consolidating all of the vaccination clinics to Bactavia. And hopefully there wouldn't be much confusion next week when those who had the vaccination were scheduled to come and have it, that there will be a lot of publicity on it to steer people that way. And I mentioned those numbers to underscore the fact that those were large. I have uh, an acquaintance who worked one day uh, a couple of weeks ago in this plains mass uh, vaccination center. And they had 1,600 for the whole community, the whole day, 1,600. And so we hope that one of these days they will rethink and put some satellite vaccination locations out there. But the college has continued to function and the board has taken some steps to make sure that we continue to function very well. If you are a homeowner, the board made a decision that has impacted you. The board of trustees chose to freeze property tax for this year, which is a saving of $1.5 million for our taxpayers in district 509. They did not stop there. The board decided to refinance, refund our debt. And there were some savings and the board gave taxpayers a saving of $1 million, additional million dollars. So if you're a taxpayer in District 509, you have a saving of about $2.5 million this year. Next, the Board of Trustees decided to freeze tuition for students for the next academic year. That is wonderful. And there are many colleges around here that are doing the same. But what the Board did was to do it not for the second time, not for the third time, the fourth year in a row of having the same tuition so that we will have generation of students coming who will experience only one tuition, $132.
And this is not the first time the board has done it four years in a row. From 2007 to 2011, the board charged the same tuition during that period. It shows the board's commitment to ensuring that the education students receive from ECC is affordable. And one of the programs that the board has supported and has highlighted has been the need to have lower student debt. Yes, there's discussion of forgiveness at the federal level, but over the last decade, ECC has been able to work hard to reduce the student loan debt by 55%. So when students come here, we steer them towards awards, scholarships, and so forth. Let me share with you some few more things that we've done during COVID. We've had over 23,000 face masks distributed. We've used nearly 9,000 units of hand sanitizers on campus. Over 180,000 hand gloves that have been used on campus. We've had, we utilize over 100 thermometers. Water bottles distributed to, to people who come in and gowns. I mentioned the PPE that went to the um, local hospitals. We also reopened our small business center in the midst of the pandemic to help businesses. We closed it during the Illinois budget crisis, but the board strongly advocated with state legislators and we were able to do that. I just saw that I have two more minutes. So let me cut out several of the things that I have planned to say to you and then do my two minute pitch. How many of you there know a young man or young woman or anybody who wants to come to ECC? If you know anybody out there, your neighbors, your friendly neighbors, your neighbors that you had quarrels with, tell them that ECC has scholarships for them. Tell everyone out there that we have federal funding for anyone who wants to come to ECC. Let them contact ECC and we will be able to provide the educational resources for them to achieve their goals. After the pandemic, there will be the need for training and retraining of people to enter the workforce. The unemployment rate is still high, but we have the programs, we have the resources to support anyone who wants to come to ECC this summer and fall. You have sent us our student, your students, your children, your relatives, friends in the past. Send them back to us. We'll get them ready for the workforce. We'll get them ready to transfer to any university. Over the last six years, our students have gone to over 530 colleges and universities. Northern Illinois University is a popular destination by many students go to U of I, Urbana-Champaign, UIC, Illinois State, Eastern Illinois. We have scholarships for students. And I saw a question about undocumented students and immigrants. We have money through the foundation for students and we don't ask. ECC is an open admission institution and we don't ask that. So yes, send us students 
and will be able to fund their education because we believe that they will contribute and they do contribute now, but they will continue to contribute to our local economy. My original offer of you returning to our campus stands, we are gonna be opening up. The next few months, we'll scale up our opening. Come August, we will open up uh, fully. So send us uh, your people. We have a great conference center. You've had meetings there, come on. If you have any problems, let me know and we'll break down the barriers. Thank you for the partnership. We have been part of this organization for a long time and we'll continue to be members of this organization for many years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sam. We really appreciate the partnership with ECC and we will take you up on the offer. As soon as we can safely gather, we will go to ECC. Uh, does anyone have any additional questions for Dr. Sam? Rick, Rick Poltinger, doctor, um, are you still maintaining your normal semesters, starts and end dates and so forth? Yes, we are. We are maintaining mid-August to December and um, summer also, but we have some classes that run for eight weeks. And so someone can take an eight week class, the first eight weeks, and I have a second class. We know that some people like modular education, we offer a variety. Next fall, we'll offer some in many in-person classes, some online, synchronous, a combination. We know that some people have come to um, enjoy studying online. We will still offer classes, but we know that our students thrive best in the in-person environment. And so we will open up utilizing all the scientific information, utilizing information from CDC, Illinois Department of Public Health, King County, to still maintain a very safe environment for students to learn and grow. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions before we move into our networking activity? I don't think I see any hands up. So thank you so much, Dr. Sam, for coming to our meeting and sharing about the wonderful work that you are doing for the Latino community. Thank you. And if you have any questions, Elena is our point person. She is good. She will be able to get any uh, thing to my attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, everyone. So our next item in the agenda is our networking activity. And I want to invite Diana Ortega to the virtual podium. And I will share the screen for the networking activity. If, uh, if I may, Madam President, I just wanted to make an announcement. Uh, we, we have a, a very, big, large number of people here today. Uh, we do have uh, quite a few uh, candidates that are running for office that we don't normally have as well. And I just wanted to remind uh, everyone here that we are uh, a 501c3 tax exempt organization uh, and that does not allow us to either directly or indirectly uh, be involved in any kind of electioneering, which would include giving you uh, specific uh, platforms to our members. Uh, so uh, please, uh, uh, if you could just be sensitive to that, we ask the same of our members as well. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Go ahead. Thank you, Gil. Uh, okay, so we have a lot of people here today, which is great. And I'm going to ask Diana, the other Diana, to um, put us into breakout spaces. And here are some questions that you are invited, not required, but some questions that you are invited to share with each other. Um, because today is St. Patrick's Day. I am 0% Irish, but I am wearing green today. And I see that some of you are as well. And I know Jeff, he wore his green tie today. So um, in that spirit, we want to um, invite you to these um, just share these questions with each other in the small group. How are you lucky? Um, and because I do, I do personally believe everyone is lucky. And so 
shape or form. You have to, you have to think about what that might be. Um, and then share something green or share something green that is on you or near you. Um, and then share what do you do to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, if anything. Um, so without further ado, uh, Diana, I will type these questions into the chat so that you can um, so that you can uh, remember what the questions are in your small group. And Diana, you can go ahead and put everyone in small groups. For how long will we be in groups? Uh, let's do seven minutes because we're running okay. out of time. And it will be Gil who will be sending everyone. So thank you, Gil. Okay. And thank you, Diana, for Okay, got it. So here are the questions. And I hope that everyone has a chance to make some good connections. Thanks. And when we come back, everyone will have a chance to share announcements, right? Yes. Yeah. I know some people are eager yeah. to do that. We can How many bakery rooms you, you want me to do here? Maybe do like four to five people per room. Oh, I can uh, assign three or four per, per person, you think? Per group? Yeah, how many breakout rooms? Let's do five. Five. All right, done. Okay. Open all rooms. Thank you, Gil. You got it. Um, and Gil, I think we can pause the recording while people are in for break.